Anthropometry is a study of the measurement of the human body in terms of the dimensions of bone, muscle and fat tissue. It's mostly used to examine body composition changes as well as disease risk, but can also give helpful information about development status. Due to the fact that there are 10 different anthropometry techniques that will be covered, we'll be making two separate videos on the topic. This video will break down ways to evaluate body fat percentage, like skin fold calibers, bioelectrical impedance analysis, hydrostatic weighing, the bod pod, and DEXA, while the other, which you can find a link to at the top right hand corner of your screen, will go through other approaches to monitor body composition changes, with weighing scales, BMI, waist circumference, waist to hip radio, and waist to height radio. But before we begin, as always, please take note of our disclaimer. So let's start off by explaining what exactly body fat percentage is. Body fat percentage is the percentage of your fat's weight versus the percentage of the weight of your bones, muscle, blood, and organs. Your fat versus everything else, basically. There are several ways to measure your body fat percentage, with some being more accurate than others. The two ways you'll see mostly taken in gyms or clinics are with the skin full calipers or with bioelectrical impedance analysis. Besides these, there are three other ways to check body fat percentage, which provide better accuracy, but aren't nearly as frequently used. They are hydrostatic weighing, the bod pod, and EXA. An advantage of body fat percentage is that it gives a better indication of body recomposition progress versus other anthropometry techniques, as again, it can differentiate fat from everything else. This is ideal for those interested in tracking body recomposition, Someone who wants to tone up, for instance, will often go this route. In addition, body fat percentage, like BMI, gives a distinction between healthy and unhealthy classifications between men and women. Let's look at an example of this. Here we have five women and five men with various body fat percentages. As you can see, men and women have different levels of body fat. Take obese women, for instance, who are classified as having a body fat percentage of 32 or over while obese men are classified as 26% or over. Then, at the other end of the spectrum, it would be typical for an athletic woman to have a body fat percentage of less than 14%, while for a man it would be less than 8%. But keep in mind that you could have the same body fat percentage of athletes, but not the same health status. This is because insufficient muscle mass along with low body fat stores would give you a low body fat percentage too which in that case can be dangerous. This is because it puts you at increased likelihood for conditions such as osteoporosis, stress fractures, joint injuries, and for the women, the loss of normal and healthy menstrual cycles. Nevertheless, since body fat percentage doesn't assess the most dangerous fat stores that are within your abdominal cavity, known as the visceral fat, like waist circumference does for example, it's not the best way to evaluate health in terms of weight. Also, it is a lot newer measurement versus, say, BMI, for example, so there hasn't been nearly as much research done regarding how well it responds to disease risk. Moving forward, why do men and women have different classifications when it comes to body fat percentage anyways? Well, it's because women need a higher level of essential fat than men. Women's essential fat is between 10 and 12%, whereas men's essential fat is between 2 and 4%. This is due to the fact that women have to stock up on energy in the form of fat in anticipation of possible future pregnancies to nourish their newborn, meaning a higher amount is required. That's why women with a higher body fat percentage look relatively similar to men with a lower body fat percentage in terms of their lean muscle mass. The average adult body fat is between 15 and 18% for men, with 22 to 25% for women but be mindful that body fat percentage varies considerably with age too. On a side note, if you are interested in undertaking our evidence-based and results-backed personalised Plato weight management program, please click the link in the top right hand corner of the video or follow the link in the description. The first method to assess body fat percentage we'll talk about is the skin fold calipers. The principle of using the skin fold calipers to assess body fat is based on the fact that most of the fat stored in the body lies immediately under the skin, known as a subcutaneous fat. Therefore, the thickness of a fold of skin picked up at strategic sites can indicate the amount of this type of fat one may have. 
The skin fold calipers are advantageous as they're affordable and you can take the measurements quickly. However, they can be quite tedious and uncomfortable to use. Alongside this, they can also be difficult to use correctly as human error can be quite high. Measurement error can range from 3.5 to 5%. It's for these two reasons that one should seek health professional assistance if you do decide to go this route. If you do get a body fat percentage checked by someone with calipers, make sure it's the same person doing the test each time, as different skill sets mean different measurements recorded. The next tool that you can use to check body fat percentage is with a bioelectrical impedance analysis, or BIA, which we will be referring to it. This works by sending a light electrical signal through your body. And how does this electrical current measure your body fat exactly? Well, fat-free mass like muscles, organs, and even your blood, etc., contains mostly water, while fat contains very little water. So the fat-free mass will have less resistance to an electrical current, as it has more water. Thus, by determining the current resistance, we can estimate how much fat-free mass and how much fat mass you have. Although, on the same note, this is the first problem with using BIA as it uses water to determine what fat versus everything else is, hydration will significantly affect your testing results. By way of illustration, you'll be less hydrated after exercise, so it will give you a slightly less accurate measurement. Therefore, the best time to use the BIA would be at times of the day when you are sufficiently hydrated. This then leads us to the second problem with BIA. Remember back to science class in school years ago and you'll recall that there was always one teacher that would repeatedly say an electrical current will always follow the path of least resistance. Well the issue with this when it comes to measuring body fat percentage using a handheld BIA is that the electrical current will pass up one arm from the machine through your chest and pass right down your opposite arm providing the relevant feedback back to the machine. Consequently it will miss your entire lower body completely. Similarly, the same thing happens if you check your body fat percentage using a weighing scale. And yes, some weighing scales have this feature. The current will come up one leg from the scale, go through your lower trunk, and then just travel down the opposite leg, missing the entire top half of your body. Although there are BIA appliances now on the market that considers both the upper body and lower body, with electrodes placed on the hands and feet, which may be more accurate than those that check the upper body and lower body separately. Even so, this method does have an error of approximately 5%. Now that we have talked about the cheap and relatively simple methods to check body fat percentage, let's talk about the more accurate, albeit a lot more expensive and complex ways. Starting with hydrostatic weighing, or also known as underwater weighing. This method is considered the gold standard of body fat assessment. It is based on the Archimedes principle which states that an object's loss of weight in water is equal to the weight of its water volume it displaces because the object in the water is buoyed up by a counterforce which equals the mass of the water it displaces. Although hydrostatic weighing is considered the gold standard to check body fat percentage, it is also costly, so it is used less than the other methods we have discussed. It basically works by putting a person onto a scale in a tank submerging them in water for 5 to 10 seconds and then the amount of displaced water is measured and based on that number your body fat percentage can be estimated. And hydrostatic weighing actually works comparatively to our next method, the bod pod. But rather than measuring the amount of displaced water caused by your body, displaced air is measured instead. The advantages of the bod pod are that it takes just 3 minutes to complete and it has similar rates of accuracy as underwater weighing, but likewise this specialised piece of equipment is expensive. And finally we come to the last method to assess body fat percentage, and that is through DEXA. In this method, two photon beams are basically passed through the body, and by determining the energy that emerges from the other side, the professional can calculate the body composition. This way is often used also to calculate body mass density too. So, in conclusion, body fat percentage can be a great method to evaluate progress for many as it can differentiate fat from everything else, unlike say using a weighing scale. But when it comes to monitoring weight from a health perspective, 
we recommend sticking with the use of BMI and waist circumference concurrently. As outlined, there are numerous ways which one may use to track their body fat percentage. If you're looking for a cheap way to get a rough idea of your progress, then it's up to you whether skinfold calipers or BIA would suffice. But if you have the money and getting the most precise measurement of your body composition is important, then hydrostatic weighing would be your go-to. Have you tried any of these body fat assessments? Which one would you recommend? We'd love to hear from you in the comment section down below. Additionally, if you're new here, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel. So that has been our video. Thanks for listening and I'll see you next time.